state-owned institutions in Barbados happens to a higher percentage of men than women. This was one of the revelations coming out of a discussion by the Barbados Association of Retired Persons on the subject abandonment of the elderly. Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs, Kirk Humphrey, who was one of the panelists, said it was not a simple matter and individuals would have to weigh all the factors in making judgments. I keep hearing about the number of persons in the hospital and so on. And today, as it stands today, there were 16 persons at the VA who would be considered abandoned. Nine at Harrison Point who would be considered abandoned. The average for the QEH would be 30. That people anticipate on, on any average of 30, but right now there are 16, which means that there are actually less persons uh, for none of this category of being abandoned at QEH today than, than generally. So I don't know that it is fair to say that there's been an increase. The point is that there are people who are abandoned and that that is a problem. Um, and that the vast majority of those are males. And, you know, then you have itinerant fathers, you know, visiting fathers who come and go, who don't check for their children, and then expect children to love them automatically. It's a very difficult proposition for many children, for many people. So I understand all of that, and that is why I, I, I understand that it's abandonment, man, always in it. But I also feel that the person who's responsible for care also needs to be cautiously assessed and judged, but judged righteously. And, and with a view to building in a structure that would allow us to take care of everyone within the state. To look at this topic with me in greater detail this morning is President of BARC, Marlin Rice Bowen. The issue of abandonment speaks to greater socioeconomic fallout and begs the question, can you really prepare for your old age to avoid abandonment? Good morning and welcome to you, Marlin. Good morning and thank you so much for inviting me here this morning to speak on a topic that's not very comforting, but we have to address it. So let's 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 chat. Yes. So how much preparation can you really do for your old age? You know, I mean, you have your children, you love your children and you expect that, you know, should you become unable to take care of yourselves through your aging years that they would be there. Yeah, that's true, Wendy, but um, the first thing one has to do is to prepare for retirement from your first paycheck. So you have to start saving and, you know, put to have a retirement plan in place. I'm not suggesting because there's a plan in place, because you have funds, that you would not be abandoned. But at least there will be options, because then if no one wants to take care of you, and you have sufficient funds, then you can seek, you know, you can pay for your care. So the first thing about, about retirement and about um, aging is to recognize that you are aging on a daily basis and you must commence planning for retirement from your very first paycheck. Okay, is the revelation that it's more men than women shocking? Should we be alarmed? No. Not at all. When you look at Barbados, uh, I don't have the actual statistic, but I know it's close to 50% of the households in this country are headed by single women, so that, I'm not surprised at all. Okay. Now, with Barbados's aged population's numbers rising constantly, does BARP has fears that these abuse and abandonment issues could at some point become epidemic? No, I, I, I wouldn't say that they can become epidemic because BARP, like all the other social agencies and government agencies, we are going to put measures in place to address this issue and we are going to do it now rather than try to do it later. So with the measures being put in place, with training being implemented, strengthened with legislation, we, I'm certain that we can address this issue and address this issue in 2022 because by 2050, 50% 50 of the population in this country will be over 60. So we have to work. Whatever we have to do, we must address it now. And I'm confident that it can be addressed. 
Okay, now should the country be moving in the direction where we're seeking to build out more hospice care for the elderly, or should it be a situation where the responsibility and cost of caring for the elderly be borne by family members, whether it be through legislation, what have you? Um, first thing, Wendy, let's let's um, remember here that not all seniors require hospice care. Not all seniors recommend, require um, care period. Um, there are seniors, I would be qualified as a senior. So we, we don't all require that level of care. What we need to see is we need to, we need private sector to join with government or private sector just roll out some senior daycare for facilities. So where seniors can be dropped off during the day, you know, and they can socialize with their peers, and in the evening they can be picked up. So we don't we we, we don't want to think of all seniors as being unable to attend to themselves, but we want to have facilities where seniors can congregate. That's going to be very important going forward. And um, of course, as I said earlier, if one plans for one's retirement, then you'll have less people depending on the state. And that should be the ultimate aim of all, all, all persons now, particularly those in their 30s and onward, start to plan for that retirement now. But as we speak today, I would want 